Well, family, so good to see every single one of you on this blessed day. I tell you, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. On behalf of Pastors Andre and Jenny Raybert, come on, it's the Faith Revival Tour, and we are traveling South Africa, and we're so excited to be back again with you. Yes, come on, happy Sunday. I hope you're wearing your Sunday best, because today we are having yes. church. This is a, pre a recording from Porch of Strom, especially for you on the Sunday morning, and we know that you're going to enjoy it. You are going to have a great time in the presence of God. You're going to be full and fed by the Word of God. Are you ready? Come on, I tell you what, I'm ready because I tell you the Lord is good and His mercies endureth forever. So whatever it is that you are today, I want you to get ready because here's the thing, prepare your seed, prepare, prepare your communion, prepare your elements because we're going to partake of communion a little bit later. But for now, we're going to praise the name that's above every other name. Remember to share, remember to be a blessing to someone by tagging, being a blessing. We're going to jump straight into praise. Are you ready to praise the name of Jesus? Yeah. Come on. Let's jump over and let's praise Jesus. Yeah. 
Anything is possible through him in the name of Jesus. Come on. There is no shadow. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your way. And there is no rival that could ever stand against your to you wherever you are welcome happy sunday 
All right, it's going to be a glorious day. Pastor Nikki, I am ready for today. It's going to be absolutely incredible. Come on, we just love Sundays. Amen. And, uh, you know, it's the day when the Lord, we all get together and we see our families and our friends and the Word of God is always preached with power and with authority. And today's going to be no different. And we're just looking forward to that. Amen. That's right. It's going to be a great day in the house of the Lord today. Listen, good news. We are with you for two and a half hours today. All right, we've got an extra 30 minutes of air time, and uh, we're just so excited. And guess what? We are bringing you the special recorded program all the way from Potchestrum. Come on, Potchestrum, you in the house today. The great, great province of what is known as the Northwest. All right, the Northwest Province, so great to have you with us. And uh, this is a special broadcast. This is our Friday morning that we are bringing you on Sunday morning. All right, so I know that God's going to do a great work in your life. We've got a powerful lineup. It's going to be a great move of God today, I really believe. And Lil, are you excited for this morning? I am so excited. You know what? We are unstoppable. That word came up this morning into my spirit with this team, how great they are to know that we, it's Sunday, and you know, we're unstoppable. We just carry on and carry on and a new fresh touch and a new fresh fire. So I know God is going to make you unstoppable today. Those are watching on live, you're going to be unstoppable in the things that God has anointed you to do. It's going to be so amazing to know that you've got God on your side. Right. We've got Him on our side. You know, and you said something uh, two nights ago, and you said, you know, um, it's every night, it's a different building. Every right. time when we get to a place, different building, different team, different people. But we serve the same God. Right. It's right. every time, and you said the presence of God. But I want to say to you this today, that it's the same God. The same God that pulled us through yesterday with all the breakdowns and everything that happened. You know, it's the same God that's going to pull you through today. He's going to make you so unstoppable to do what you need to do. And I just, it's just an honor to wake up every morning to know we've got God on our side. No matter how you feel, no matter how things come across your way, to know that God is still God today. No matter what happened, no matter, God is God today. And He's the God that will show Himself forth. He will manifest Himself today in the service. I think today it's going to be a very significant day for us. It's going to be a great day, Jen. Amen. Do you know something that has earmarked this whole uh, tour of revival that we've had in South Africa has most certainly been the tangible presence of Jesus. In every meeting we have been in, He has really made Himself real to His people. And I know that what we experience here, you're experiencing at home or wherever you are watching from too. The presence of Jesus is always here where we lift His name up. But there's something else that I believe is earmarked in our meetings, and that is the truth of God's Word. You know, we can experience the things of the Spirit and be watered and be filled and and get to that place of just experiencing His personal touch on our lives. But there has to be a sustaining of that. And the only way we can sustain in that place is to have His Word come alive on the inside of us. And I believe that today that is exactly what you're going to be experiencing. Not just the tangible presence of Jesus, but you are going to be built up in the truth of God's Word today, that it's going to cause fruit to come in your life. That is evidence of what He has promised us, because our faith has to attach itself to something. Your faith isn't blind. Your faith attaches itself to something, to the promises of God's Word, to the truth of His Word. So I can guarantee you this. By the end of this broadcast, by the end of our time here today, you will not only experience the personal touch and presence of Jesus Himself, but you will also have His Word alive on the inside of you, already producing fruit inside of you. Something solid and concrete that you can hold on to as you sustain what He's already starting to do in your life. Hallelujah. (laughs) 
Oh, come on. You know, I, I'm looking at the countdown. We are seven days away from Buffalo City, East London, in the Great Faith Dome. In seven days, this very broadcast, one week from today, we will be broadcasting live from the Faith Dome with the official start, Pastor Nikki of Revival 5.0. It's all going to be happening officially. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Is that, is that play button ready to push Revival 5.0? Revival 5.0. Join us in the Faith Dome in Buffalo City, South Africa from the 30th of October to the 6th of November 2022. This one is going to be bigger and better than before. Revival has to stop. There's no holding back. There's no stopping what God wants to do. I'm ready and hungry for a move of God like never before. And when He shows up, you don't have to ask Him for healing. Healing has come. He really does love you. He has canceled your sin. Revival has come and it's going to spread to the continents of the world. Go to myfaith.tv, email us on faithrevival at myfaithtv.com or scan the QR code on screen. Registration is essential to secure your free seats. He's going to take your life and he's going to destroy and obliterate every limit you have. It is where the supernatural invades the natural. Revival 5.0. That is the culmination. That is the completion of this amazing tour that we've had around the nation, every single one of the nine provinces, and we will be in Buffalo City back in the Great Faith Dome on Sunday morning, 9 a.m. on the 30th of October with you live. You don't want to miss. Pastor Nikki, it's going to be powerful, isn't it? You know, I'm looking forward to East London because this is the, you know, it's like the accumulation of things. Right. And every seed that we have sown through the provinces, I believe the harvest is going to come to its fullness in East London. And you know, the dome always reminds me of the ark. Come I don't on. know why. It's just on. like, it just hosts the presence of God. There's going to be a cloud of God's glory in that place. So we really want to invite every single person that we've met through, the, through this whole tour. Mm to make your way down to East London. Let's gather there by the thousands. Let's have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit there. Uh, you said seven days. I don't know. Maybe we're going to go, you know, 50 days of glory or something. <laughs> but the glory of God will show up. I believe that in yeah, Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Are you ready to change your tickets? <laughs> Are you ready to stay a little longer? All right. Just what God is going to do, it's going to be absolutely incredible. And so we want to invite you. If you haven't yet registered, if you haven't yet made a decision to come to Buffalo City, would you come? And would you be a part of what God's doing at Revival 5.0? Now this morning, I feel there's an anointing for the Word. Yeah. Like you said, God's about to do something special here. You know, the, you can feel it in the atmosphere. The, 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 you have to follow the anointing. We know that. Right. And the anointing, I can feel, is on the Word. It's resting on the Word. So whatever is going to be preached this morning, the anointing follows that. The Word, obviously, we know is so powerful. Once a Word is spoken, it comes into existence. And, um, yeah, you can take your seats. Here's the thing. Here's a couple here. I met them before the service. Yeah. This beautiful couple here. You see that little man there? Yeah. He's, he's convinced that he has to take communion every day because Pastor Andre says, Come on. We have to take communion every single day. And he blessed me so much. He wanted to know, are we going to take communion? Today? We're taking communion. And the word goes to the young, yeah. to the old, to the rich, the poor, popular, unpopular, everybody. And they also have a baby there. You know, uh, the, the power of television, let me show you this. I prophesied that you will have a child um, in one of the programs. And there's the child right there. So when you receive the word, there's a the baby right there. <laughs> Wow, Once wow. the word goes forth, not just in the building, that's Come what on. I want to get to. Come on. Once it's spoken over television, it's the word of God doesn't have space and time. 
wherever you are watching from, whatever is being preached this morning, if you grab a hold of it, if you need a miracle, you can appropriate it, and it happens right there. Nothing is impossible with the Lord. And once the word of faith gets, gets delivered, faith rises in the hearts of people, Come on. and miracles is the only answer, or not the only answer, it will follow the word. Right. The word of God is confirmed by signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. So Amen. I'm looking forward to that. Now, part of Revival 5.0, Pastor Nikki, we're really wanting the men and women of God to come out. You know, we, we've, we've been talking about this for a long time, and it, it, it's like we use the saying, all roads lead to Buffalo City. But it's about the presence of God in that faith dome. That's the same place where you received an impartation, obviously with a different roof, because we've had a modification since that year. But, but it was there where everything turned around for your ministry and for your life. And we're wanting more of you, more of you men and women of God, to come and receive a fresh impartation right there in the faith dome. And so on Wednesday night, the what's it, the, Thursday the 3rd, Friday the 4th, and Saturday the 5th of November, and ending with Sunday the 6th, those four days are going to be powerful ministerial and leadership impartation that we are focusing on basically to ignite that fire that we would start fires all over the nation and the world. And I want you to come out. I want you to come. If, if, you, can, if, if, if you can only come for a certain time, come for that last weekend. Come for that, that, that period because something is going to happen from that Thursday. Now, it's going to happen the whole week. But on that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, something amazing is, is, is going to be happening. And we want every leader... We want every minister to come, everyone in the fivefold. You know, like I said, you know, you become the product of the anointing you submit under. So if, if you want to submit to an anointing or to a move that is dead and dry, that's how you're going to live. But if you can come under a fresh anointing where the oil of God starts flowing, what happened to me? 11 years ago, I had that encounter. It's 11 years later. I'm wow. more on fire more come on, come on. crazy, whatever, because I learned to sustain a move of God. And that is what I want men of God to understand. You can, you can have an encounter or you can sustain an encounter. And we want to teach you and train you how to go back to your churches, sustain a move of God, turn your church around to become a church that can host the presence of God and not host another announcement and another program and another whatever. On. Host the presence of God because the presence of God brings people. It, when the presence of God comes, it comes in its fullness. You know, you've been in our church. That place is packed. It's not because I'm there, you there, Ben is there. It's the presence that brings people. I've tried all the programs. I've tried everything. I had idols on my platform. I had all the superstars on my platform. I had all the rugby players on my platform and all sweat and cuss and whatever. That's their language. And I thought that will draw people. That doesn't draw people. Right. The presence of God draws people, changes people, makes people's lives brand new. And that's what I want pastors to hear today, is we want you to come to these meetings and be impacted by the spirit of revival, that you can go back to your cities, change your city, change your church, change your family, and start hosting the presence of God in this end time move of God, and not just have another meeting, another encounter, but learn to sustain a move of God. The God that we serve is an ever-increasing God. We go from glory to glory, from faith to faith. So if you have an encounter and you come back next year and you're the same, then you haven't learned how to increase in the spiritual realm. And right. I believe those meetings, Pastor Andre, we're going to train the people, equip them, ignite them, and let them have encounters with God and learn to sustain the move of God. You know? So come along. All right, East London, Buffalo City, starting Sunday the 30th, one week from today through until Sunday the 6th, and who knows where after that. All I know is 
God's going to do something very, very special. Let's pray, Jen, and let's get ready. Come on, I, I'm going to invite you to stand one more time. I just like to honor God like this when we pray. And uh, let's commit this morning, wherever you're watching from on this beautiful Sunday morning, Father, your presence. Lord, we don't just want another program. We want an encounter. We want this time with you, Lord, to be life-transforming. As your word goes forth, Father, we ask that it would change every heart and every life. And that today would be the beginning of the greatest move of God that every single life has ever seen or experienced. Lord, let it start today in our hearts. And for those of us that are already flowing in your presence, Lord, increase is what we pray. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Rory, let's worship one song. And I want us to break bread this morning. I want us to come to that place of His presence. Come on, wherever you are in your home right now, wherever you are in your living room, hotel room, hospital bed, prison cell, come on, you know the anointing of God. Just lift your voice. Let's begin. Come on, lift your hands. Let's worship. Let the anointing of God just begin to flood you right now. I feel His presence so strong this morning. Come on, let's worship. As I walked through the door, I sense His presence. And I knew this was the place where love abounds. For this is the temple, Jehovah God abides here. For we are standing in His presence on the whole.
Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask my little friend down here. Come. You may be seated. Come. I've got one for you. Come on. Come. Have you been partaking? Are you ready to do communion? Okay. He says, okay. The presence of the Lord is something so special. The love of God is goodness. And so, wherever you are in your home, right now, wherever you are, I want you to partake with us. We're going to pray. Father, thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your body that was broken for us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your peace. And thank you, Lord Jesus, that the victory is ours because of the body of Christ and the blood. And we partake of communion today in remembrance of the victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's eat the bread. Okay, here's the cup. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blessing of the cup of salvation, of healing, of Calvary. Blessing and breakthrough. And Jesus, today we partake of your blood, the cup of blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's stand and worship him. Wherever you are, come on, worship him.
the day it was shed for us because it's a supernatural blood. It's a blood that flows from Jesus into every single one of us that are a part of Him. If you are so grateful for what the blood of Jesus has done for you today, won't you just raise your hand and raise your voice and thank Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, your blood has set me free. Thank you, your blood has healed me. Your blood has saved me. Your blood has taken me right out of the kingdom of darkness and put me into the kingdom of life. I am yours and you are mine because of the blood. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a privilege. What a privilege to have the blood of Jesus running in us, running over us, running through us. This is glorious. This is our inheritance. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask that you stay in this atmosphere of absolute gratitude. Don't you feel that's what it is? I feel that just in the atmosphere here, there's an atmosphere of faith. There's an atmosphere of rejoicing. We are so blessed to be children of God today. So with that same uh, atmosphere up in your heart as well, won't you take your seats, those of you who are here in the auditorium here in Potchefstroom. Hallelujah. And those of you who are watching uh, from wherever you are watching, we are so blessed. We feel so honored and so privileged to be able to come and encourage you in the Word today. That's, that it just, it means everything to us. You know, it says that Jesus, well, the Word says that it's Jesus who set us free. And when He sets us free by His Word, the Word says we're not just free, we are free indeed. Hallelujah. I want to take just a few moments with you, just a few moments to stir up your faith on the inside. And, you know, I just said to the Lord, if, if I could give one thing just in these few moments I have, I pray that in the truth that I give to you today or that the Lord puts in your heart today, I, I pray that you would get a glimpse of how much He cares for you, how much He really cares about you. 
because He does. He cares about every detail. If you have your Bibles, and those of you who are watching from home, it is Sunday morning for you, so you should have your Bibles out because we're having church together. Hallelujah. And those of you who are here, could you open up your words if it's on a device or if it's got the good old-fashioned paper, which I love, then let's, let's go straight to the Word of God. I want us to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. Now, it's actually verse 10 and 11. I know those of you who have been watching Faith TV, this is not a scripture that is uncommon to you. It's something that you have probably heard being taught to you over and over again. But it's something that the Lord has placed on my heart for us this morning. And I want to start, first of all, with verse 9. In this verse, there are three specific truths that I want to impart to your hearts today. Are you ready? Yes. Hallelujah. Here we go. I'm reading from the Amplified Classic Version. It says, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. It says, And God, who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating, will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness, which manifest itself in act of goodness, kindness, and charity. Now, the first thing that I want to, a truth that I want to impart to you is that first part, which says, God provides seed for the sower and bread for eating. Now, we know, according to the Word of God, it says in Matthew 6, 33, and I know that whole part of Matthew 6 speaks about how every single one of us have needs, the basic needs of life. We need to eat to survive. We need food. And God says so clearly in His Word that when we seek Him first and His way of being and doing right, which is His righteousness, then He says, you don't have to worry about a thing. I'm going to be your provider. Hallelujah. So I want you to understand today, I want all of us to have this truth solid on the inside of us. It is God who provides our bread for eating. But He doesn't just provide our bread for eating. The Word says He also provides seed to the sower. Now, why would He say seed to the sower and bread for eating? Isn't it enough just to have bread? Isn't it enough just to have our needs met? No, not for God, because He's a generous God. He's a good God. He didn't create us just to see us just survive with the basics. No, He has made a way for His children who put Him first and who want to do His way of living, He has decided to give us a way that we will continuously be able to tap into His provision. Not just, oh God, please, I need this, but He has given us a means to always receive His provision. And it's by something called seed. Hallelujah. And I want to just encourage you in this. Seed time and harvest. The principle of being able to sow so that you get in return provision is God's idea. It was always His idea. In Genesis chapter 2, uh, sorry, chapter 8, verse 22. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 12, He establishes something called seed time and harvest. It says, while the earth remains... As long as the earth is here and we are on it, there will always be a way for us to tap in to the supernatural provision of God for our lives. And it says, there will always be seed time and a harvest. And then in Genesis 1 verse 12, it says, every seed that is sown is always going to produce after its own kind. Hallelujah. So when we know in order to pay for the groceries, in order to pay for the school fees, in order to pay for the roof over our heads, in order to pray, uh, pay for anything, we need finances. So when we have a financial seed and we sow it into the ground, good ground, the way God teaches us how to sow, we can always expect a harvest in return. And that harvest is going to produce of after its own kind. So if it's a financial seed, what harvest am I going to receive? 
finances. That's what the Word says. We can't sow a financial seed for our healing. No, He paid for our healing already on the cross. We can't sow a financial seed for uh, something that is spiritual, something that He's already paid for. Our freedom in Jesus doesn't come through finances. It comes through Jesus Himself. He was that seed sown for us. And we only, we get that by our faith in Him. But if it's what we're speaking about here, any need that we can only get through finances, that comes by a financial seed. Bless God. He is good. He's made a way for us to always get a harvest in return. Something that I found about the Lord, and Jesus always used farming terms, didn't He? And something that He spoke about is when we sow a seed, the smallest thing we get back is what we call a crop. So in other words, you know, I'm going to get a crop from my seed. But then He also speaks about something a bit bigger. He says, when you sow a seed, you can't, don't just get a crop, you can get a harvest a bit bigger than that. And then he takes it one step further. He says, you can't just receive a crop. You won't just receive a harvest, but you receive increase. That's a bumper crop, hallelujah. A bumper harvest. There's always more when it comes to the kingdom of God. That's what that first part of the scripture is saying. You have a means. As a child of God, when we do things according to how He teaches us to do in His Word, we will always be able to expect His provision to come into our lives when we sow and we can reap from that. Hallelujah. But look at the next part it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. It says this, He will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing. We have found when we obey God's principle of sowing and reaping, and we sow our financial seed the right way, and I'm going to show you very quickly what that is. But listen first, when we do it the right way, He says He will right here multiply and provide your resources resources for sowing. What does that mean? God knows how to bring income streams into our lives that we will always have more and more and more seed to sow. Do you get that? This is so cool. We have found we can be in places where it doesn't seem there's anything going well as far as the economy is concerned. Like there's no business opportunities. Like there's no way to get income stream. God, I have always wanted to be such a good blessing. I've always wanted to see this project that's come up and, and be the one who finances it. Has anybody felt that way? When you see people that have a great vision, I wish I could just get behind them and take a good amount of finances and bless that ministry. I wish I could see people's lives that really need a blessing and so into their lives. I want to be such a generous giver that when people see me, they think, wow, she is so blessed because look how she continues to be an extravagant blessing. Anybody been that way? Well, you know, that's God's idea. That's His plan. And that's why He says, do you know when you do things my way, when you take your seed and you sow it the way I teach you to sow it, not only will you receive a crop for your own needs, not only will you receive a, a harvest to provide for more than just your own needs, but you can get into a place of supernatural increase that I will be able to cause income streams to come into your life that you never even saw was possible. He will give you ideas. He will suddenly put things inside of you when you realize, oh, there's a need. Thank you, God. And you start pursuing that need. It's some new business. It's some way of creating wealth. God is the one who does that. Where there is nothing, He produces stuff for us because He's not limited by the natural. And He gives us supernatural ideas so that we can always have a new income stream to be able to get more and more seed to be more of a blessing. Which brings me to the third thing there. It says, not only will He give you your bread, not only will He give you seed to sow, 
But when we do it His way, He will, as I said, provide and multiply your resources for sowing, and He will increase the fruits of your righteousness. What is my righteousness? Well, that's doing things God's way. And when I do things God's way, there's going to be fruit. Fruit means evidence, evidence that I've done things His way. And it says it's manifest in this. Look what it says. It is manifest in active goodness and kindness and charity. You can be known as the most extravagant giver into the kingdom of God that lives just by following the way He tells us to sow. Hallelujah. So very quickly, are you ready to learn what that is? Are you ready? Here it goes. Praise God. I'm going to go straight to the, um, the Scripture. There's three things on how to sow right. As a church, we might have the principle, but when we don't apply it the way He teaches us, we're not going to see the results that He's promised us. There are three ways that we're going to sow right. Are you ready for them? The first thing is strategically. We have to sow strategically. What does that mean? We have to sow into the right things. When we take our seed and we are sowing it for a crop, for a harvest, for an increase, we have to know where to sow that seed. According to Galatians 6 verse 6, we sow financial seed to get an increase back from it into wherever the Word of God is being preached. That's what it says. Galatians 6 verse 6. You don't just sow it to anywhere. No, strategically, if I, look, if I want to be a blessing and I just want to give to the soup kitchen down the road or I want to give to people who are poor and need help, that's awesome and we're told to do that. But we don't sow there to receive the increase. We sow there to be a blessing and God promises that He will reward us for that. He said that. He said it's like when you give to the poor or you give to a need, He says it's the same as giving to me and I'll make sure you get that back. But when we sow for that increase, then we always need to be strategic and sow wherever the Word of God is being preached with power. Hallelujah. And you'll find where it is being preached with power, that place sows themselves. They will be sowers too. And that's why there will always be an increase supernaturally on that seed. The second thing, another way of being right or sowing right is not just strategically, but it is also systematically. The Word of God says that when we sow and sow and sow regularly, consistently, our harvest is always going to be regular and consistent. It has to be systematic sowing. I will constantly sow, not sowing and waiting, waiting if I get anything back. No, I sow, I sow, I sow, I sow because different seed produces different crops at different times. Hallelujah. So I just stay obedient. I'm strategic and I'm systematic. I keep that seed going into the ground. Praise God. Do you know, um, Mark Hankins is an amazing pastor and he wrote a book that I absolutely love. And it's called How to Receive the Extravagant Generosity of God. And he speaks about with a farmer that he met in Colorado. He said he looked at all the machinery that he had for his crops. And there was one piece of machinery that the farmer said, can you guess, out of all these magnificent machines, which one do you think is the most valuable to a farmer? So he looked at all of them and he thought, oh my goodness, I wouldn't even know. I mean, I wouldn't even know where to begin. But apparently there is a machine called a planter. I guess in South Africa we would call it a sower. A machine that literally sows the seed into the ground. He says people, farmers, will go into so much debt just to make sure that they have the finances to keep this machine, the planter or the sower, operating properly. 
He says, when harvest time comes and they send out the harvesting machines to bring in the harvest, if there is ever a gap and an open space where there's nothing to harvest, the first place they go check is the planter or the sower. When we experience any type of financial lack in our lives, the first thing we go and check is, have I been sowing? Have I been planting? Hallelujah. Praise God. Consistent sowing will bring consistent harvests. Hallelujah. And the third thing, the last thing of knowing how to sow right. So first of all, we sow strategically into the Word of God where that ministry is also sowing. And the second thing is, we, like I just said, it has to be systematically. You have to constantly, continuously sow, habitually sow to habitually receive. And the third one over here is that our attitude. We have to have a cheerful, expectant attitude when we sow. You don't sow as though you are losing something. You sow cheerfully because you know what you are doing. You are following God's principle, His supernatural way of producing and bringing provision into your life. It's a privilege. It's a privilege for a child of God. This is the greatest way that we get to constantly tap in to the financial resources of heaven itself. And it's not measured by what we think we're worth. It's measured by His riches in glory. By His standards, not our own. This is a privilege to give into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And you know what I found in, well, which you would have known as well, this area of finances, of sowing seed, of bringing finances into the kingdom of God, according to God, He says in Proverbs, this is the one area we must test Him in. It's the one area He says, please, 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 please do it and prove me now by this. Please, I want to bless you so much. Just try it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it and watch what I will do for you. Hallelujah. What a good God. What a good God. And we must be expectant. We have to. Do you know what? Because it's God's principle of seed time and harvest. Any seed that does not produce a harvest is in violation to God's own principle. You cannot have even an inkling of a thought that your seed is not going to produce. Because if you do that, then you're kind of saying, oh, well, God's Word doesn't actually work. Because He has promised this is what's going to happen. He says you will receive a crop, a harvest, an increase. If you don't, that seed is in violation of my Word. Hallelujah. That's good news for us. That's good news for us. So we have an expectancy. And so that brings me to the last part of the scripture, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 11. We've learned seed time and harvest is God's idea. We've learned it's His way for us to tap into His supernatural provision. We know that we have to do it strategically, systematically, and with a cheerful, expectant heart. And look what the promise says. It says in verse 11, thus you will be, not maybe, you will be. I want you to say that word. I will be. Say it again like you mean it. I will be enriched in all things and in every way. I can hear it's dropping in some of you. Hallelujah. And it says, so that you can be generous and your generosity will bring forth thanksgiving to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you here are ready to stand in that promise to be enriched? in all things, in every way, if that is you, then I want you to right now, just keep your own, uh, I wanna say, just close your eyes where you are now. So it's just you and God, just you and God. Did you notice? I never ever said it has anything to do with the amount that you give. No, it has everything to do with your faith in God. 
It has everything to do with you obeying all He said. He didn't give you an amount, did He? He does that to you personally, the Word says. He will personally tell you what amount you are to sow. Praise God, because everybody's in a different place. So the only thing He says is that you hear from me. Let Determine in your heart from me what you are going to sow. And as you sow that thing, and you, well, that thing is a seed. And as you sow that seed, and you do it with a cheerful heart, with expectancy inside of you, you will be blessed in all things, enriched in all things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Wow. Wow. There is nothing like the Word in the morning. Building your faith, changing your life. All the details are on the screen right now, wherever you're watching from. And uh, if you're here in the house, the ushers are handing out envelopes. Gra grab a hold of an envelope, fill it in, complete it, put in that seed, get it ready for what God's going to do. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube right now, on Facebook you can go to the top, there's a donate button. You can click on that donate button and you can sow a seed as well right there on Facebook. If you're watching right here uh, on YouTube, just cross over to our, our page, myfaith.tv. And uh, that's a great place for you to be able to sow that seed. And you can do it all online right over there. Okay, so everything is out. Everything is available for you, to a way that you can give and be a blessing. This morning, it is a Sunday morning service where you're watching from. It's a Friday morning right here in Potchefstroom. And so I'm going to ask that we have an opportunity as we worship the Lord just a little bit further, that we come to that place of bringing our, our seed. I, I love to do this on a Sunday morning. And uh, in fact, we kind of do it almost every time back home because there's nothing like bringing your seed to the house of God. So wherever you are right now, I want you to prepare that seed. I want you to prepare that envelope. And I want us to bring it. And we, we're going to just place it right here on the altar together as we worship. Let it be a seed of worship. Let it be a seed of, of Lord, just thank you. I'm just falling in love with you over and over. You know, as I talked to so many of you, I was speaking to a gentleman earlier that was in the coffee queue getting coffee and uh, out over there, and he said, Andre, I've missed less than 10 days since we started on the 18th of March, 2020. And the thing that we have been teaching, the thing that we have been talking about in all of these years has been being a daily giver and be a daily partaker of the bread and the cup of communion. And those that have grabbed a hold of it, something has changed in their lives. It has carried us. And so that's what Jen said. It's never about the amount. It's about the opportunity to be obedient. And uh, the, 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 even this morning, I, I, just, I just see the blessing of God over, over our lives. And this morning, we took a load of laundry to go and get Go, go to the laundry and, and, and get it, what do you call it, laundered. <laughs> okay, washed. And uh, we're on the road. We've got to find laundries wherever we are to, to get our laundry washed. And, you know, I, I, was, I was there and she was weighing the laundry. It works by weight. And you pay. And then she gives me this amount. And I looked at her and I said, is that all? And she said, yeah, that's all it'll cost. I said, who's doing all the laundry? No, we've got ladies in the back. I said, yeah, just bless them all. And I just, because, you, you know, we so often get stuck in, in, in a mindset that says, okay, well, I'll just pay what's expected. But God wants us to be a giver in every area of our life. It, it has to just flow from you. And I went to fill up as well for the road trip tomorrow, and I just blessed the guy. I mean, he couldn't believe it. Just the blessing. Of God. And this morning I sit down here and I get a text message on my phone from one of my team, and I, I, I want to read it to you actually. 
I, I, I love this, this message because this just really blessed me. And um, it was sent to me from Cape Town. All right? Now, Cape Town, no, we're coming. All right? We're going to be in Cape Town this week. You better be at the meetings. All right? And you better register and sign up and, 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 and be there because already between you and me, the venue, we have about 50 seats left in Cape Town. And the venue is maxed out. All right? With, so, so you better go on and you better register. Cape Town, we're coming and you say, well, what's going to happen if we don't? You just got to get first in the queue. All right? You've got to get there early because it works on a first come, first serve basis. Kimberley, hundreds have signed up for Kimberley. Absolutely incredible. All right, what's happening? Bloemfontein and Cape Town. But um, this, this is a, a message from one of our partners in Cape Town. All right, and a man that has been uh, uh, watching. And he says this, I've been watching the broadcast and I heard all that you guys have gone through. Okay. What I was sharing last night with the team and the battle that they've gone. He says, I want to do some of the most amazing food for you. He says, and I will bring it to the venue in Cape Town. And I found out that he's some chef or some guy that, that, that's wanting to spoil us and a gentleman who's partnering with us. And he says, let me know if this was, is in order. I watched. I'm so blessed. Through the whole of lockdown, you guys have been there for me. I want to bless you. And uh, he signs his name here, one of our, our, our partners. So uh, Pastor Jay texts back and says, that would be absolutely amazing. Thank you for your kindness. What, what did you have in mind? And this is the part that really got me excited. Okay. So we say, okay, well, you know, what do you have in mind? Because normally when something like this happens, you know, it's normally lasagna. <laughs> Trust me, I've been on the road. Everywhere you go, people want to bless you with lasagna. Okay, and, and, and lasagna is great, and I understand that. And, I'm, I'm, you know, it's either lasagna and asparagus or baked beans or, you know, something. So he writes here, and he says, well, I was thinking of, beef filet, green berry salad, Norwegian salmon, yeah, and brownies, okay, for tea. Please let me know which day would be good for you guys. Every day will be good for us. Every day. Every day. And then I was thinking, I was just thinking of the goodness of God. You know, yesterday we were sitting at the restaurant as a team having lunch, and you walked up to me. And, and it was just confirming again just how amazing God is. And, and he walks up to us, he bumps into us in the restaurant, and he walks up and he says, yeah, and he gives me a little tool slip that he's already advance paid for the meal and a large portion of our meal that we were eating as a team in the restaurant. He's already advance paid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the seed. Thank you for the seed. The, these are the testimonies of the goodness of God. All right? So you put a seed in the ground in advance for your daughter to have coffee and a date. I mean, you know, I mean, you, 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 you got it. You better pull this date off today, okay? We leave tomorrow. So I'm watching you. I'm watching you. In fact, I should think you should turn it into lunch. All right? And, you, you know, because we're going to be hungry when we finish the morning broadcast. Let's bless the Lord with our seed today. You can't outgive God. You can't outgive God. Come on. He's, he's a good God. Amen. 
glory. Let's worship. And let's give to God, and we're going to get the Word of the Lord inside of us today. Amen. Are you glad you came? Come on, stand to your feet. Bring your blessing and your seed. Just lay it at the foot over here at the altar, and let's worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and we're going to get into the Word in a moment.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Why don't you take your seats? This morning, it's such an honor and a privilege to have Roy Fields with us, traveling with us. And um, he was so instrumental in the Lakeland Revival, a great move of God that took place in Florida. He has traveled with the nations of the world, carries the fire of revival. We never advertise a speaker. We never promote a speaker. We flow as a team wherever we go. But he's going to be with us right through Revival 5.0. And uh, him and Melanie, his beautiful wife, why don't you just both stand? Come on, let's give them a big God bless you. Welcome. So good to have you with us. Welcome to Africa. Welcome to South Africa. And um, I just, I want us this morning, and you watching at home, to get ready for what God's going to do. I'm so glad we've got this extra 30 minutes with you on the network on a Sunday morning. And so it's going to be a great time. The Word's going to touch your life. And we're going to pray for everyone in this house today. So at the end of today, I'll give you opportunity to run for the doors if you don't want prayer. But we're going to pray. We're going to anoint you, and we're going to release what we've come to this city to release upon your life this morning. Amen. Once we through the Word. And so I want you once again, South Africa, Africa Faith Broadcasting Network, to welcome Roy Fields, but we're going to roll this in. And he's going to get up straight after and share the word. This is Roy Fields. Not everybody believes in God, but I do. I believe he sent his son to die on a cross for all of our sin. I believe he raised him from the dead. I believe he ascended. I believe he is coming again. I believe he baptized me with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You know why? Because I'm a believer. He said the rise and shine from the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Oh, we don't need weak Christians. We need people full of the fire of God. Jesus said to us. It's time for the believers to gather again. The Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. I want everybody to stand in here for just a moment. Why don't you put your hand on your heart? And I want to just, we want to pray this by faith here this morning. Those of you that are watching by way of television and on the internet, just go ahead and put your hand on your heart. Close your eyes and just say this after me. Say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus speak, to my heart. speak to my heart. Change my life. Change my life. Open, my ears Open my ears to hear, to hear what, your what your Spirit says. Open my eyes, Open my eyes. To, see to see what you want me to see. Me to see. Through, your word, Through your Word, by your Spirit, by your spirit. in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated here this morning. Well, it's an honor to be here. And I want to say again, thank you to the pastor here of this great church in Pachepstrom. Did I pronounce it right? Pachepstrom. What they said. Pachepstrom. Achyama. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so I want to say thank you to you and to Dr. Andre and obviously Jenny. What a great word that was brought by you today on giving. And uh, I want to introduce you real quickly to my wife, even though he already introduced us. I just want her to come up and just greet very briefly to say hello to you. She's been with me on this whole trip. I wouldn't be able to do what I do unless she's here. And as they say, behind every happy wife, are you happy? Yeah. Is a very surprised mother-in-law. Would you give her a great big God bless you? 
Hello, hello, and I just want to say thank you for allowing us to come. Um, thank you to Shofar Church and um, all of South Africa who's welcomed us into each and every province. And I'm like excited because this was the first time I got to actually see your whole country. And something about it made me think there's probably a little different in each area, right? So I got to really, we're getting to know really who you are. And uh, Roy and I have been privileged to experience several moves of the, of the Lord, several moves of God in our nation, which is America, and in parts of the world. And um, as we are feeling in our hearts that God's wanting to do something very special again, specifically in our nation, America, we were getting ready to plow again for revival because of what has happened to our nation. And we were getting ready to plow and believe God for something significant in our nation. And we got invited to come here to South Africa in the middle of that being on our heart. And Roy and I talked about it. And something in me sensed that your nation is at a very critical point in the history of South Africa. And something in my spirit said, I think maybe we need to just put that on hold for a second because I believe God's wanting to do something significant in this nation. And as we said yes to come over here, we came over with a very specific purpose and intention. Because, you know, as Pastor Nikki said on another broadcast, there was a blood-washed Africa that came as a move of the Spirit by Reinhard Bunke. But I saw something of what he saw, which is the fire, the flames of fire coming upon this continent. Why? Why? Because I believe with all my heart that the thing that is needed to change a nation is on the inside of you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And if that, that little seed, that little treasure that's on the inside of you rises up, I know that something significant can happen in this nation. And I just felt in my heart that flame of revival is always available. God's not waiting to say yes. God's waiting on you to say yes. And I just felt in my heart, I just wanted to say this, if God were to ask you, would you be willing to host a move of the Spirit for the sake of South Africa? And if he were to ask you to set aside petty differences, to set aside your division, what if he were to ask you to lay aside some religious mindsets? What if he were to ask you to give of your boats, to give of your restaurants, to give of your resources, to host a move of God? Would it be worth it? And I think he's asking, what will your answer be? I so believe God wants to do something. And that is why we're here. And I believe the Lord's going to use men and women of God, full of the fire, to stir something inside of you that is ready to change this nation. Amen? Amen. I love you guys. And I thank you for having us. Amen. To my husband. Amen. Come on, give her a great big God bless you. <clears throat> you know, one of the things I really appreciate about you, Dr. Andre, is that when you said you got touched in revival in 1995, it changed the very course of your life. Your marriage changed, your life changed, your ministry changed, everything changed. And I have to say, the same thing happened to me in 96 when I walked through the doors of the threshold of the Brownsville Revival. How many have ever heard of the Brownsville Revival? This was in Pensacola, Florida, where four million people came through the doors of a local church and 400,000 people gave their lives to Christ over a five-year period. Meeting after meeting every night without a break for five years. The, the uh, worship leader there, his name was Lendl Cooley. He's a really good, close friend of mine today. I've known him for 14 years. He said, uh, Roy, how long did Lakeland go? I said, four and a half months. He says, Roy, we didn't even get a break until nine and a half months. He says, I don't feel sorry for you. Because <laughs> I sang every single night. But my point is, in the Browns revival, when I came in 96, Dr. Andre, and those that are watching, maybe you can relate to this, those around the world, if you don't know what a revival is, it means that it's you are due to have one in your heart personally. Come on, how many need a personal revival? 
Now, what is revival anyways? Revival is a word that you can't even find in the Bible. But guess what else you can't find in the Bible? The word Bible. You can't find methamphetamine in the Bible. You can't find cocaine in the Bible. But we know by the Spirit, if that becomes a device in our life, we know by the Holy Spirit we don't need those things. Revival works the same way. You may not see the word in the Bible, but everywhere Jesus went, everywhere Paul went, when he traveled in their ministry, there was either a riot or a revival. And I will settle for either one in South Africa because at least something's moving. Can you say amen? I don't know about you, but the days of stagnant church are over. The days of fake Christianity are over. When I walked in through those doors in Brownsville in 1996, there was about 3,000 people, 1,700 to 1,800 inside the building, another 1,200 on the outside or whatever. And when I walked in through the threshold of the building, something physically, it felt like put a hand on my chest, but there was nobody doing anything. And I was only 18, 19 years old. I had an attitude when I went. I didn't really want to be there, but I kind of did because I knew I needed something in my life. I had grown up in church since I was... Let me slow my voice down here a minute. I forgot about Afrikaans here. Achyaman, by a donkey. Husum belief. Bear with me. Praise the hira. Praise God. Dit is by a lacquer. <laughs> that's all I know. Don't be, that's all I know. Don't be that impressed. But I, I can tell you that when I walked through that door, in my heart and in my soul, I'd already been in a church for all my life. I was born and raised in church. My mother took me to every meeting we ever went to. Everything that was going on, I was always in the church. It was Sunday morning service. It was Sunday night service. It was Wednesday night. Royal Rangers, it was called. It was a youth group that was for like, almost like a, what would you call it? Like a, a boys club kind of thing or something. And then Friday night, we would have special meetings. And in I would go to all those meetings. I was having the anointing placed in my life. I was having the words and the seeds of the word planted in my life. I had no idea that years later it would grow into this ma a massive tree and God would give me fruit to just keep on planting more seed. You know, we love the Word. We love the Spirit, but we've got to bring these two together. The Spirit and the Word. If you just have great meetings where you just shake on the floor and all that, that's great, but if you don't have the Word, then all of a sudden a storm comes along and you don't even know what to do. You know, Pentecostals have uh, a couple things wrong with them. First of all, they don't know what to do with quiet time. <laughs> you don't have to always fill in all the gaps. Sometimes the best prayer you can pray is saying nothing. I mean, how does God get a word in anyways? Oh, God, oh, God, thank you, Jesus. And he's like waiting there going, over, can I get a word in? Can I say something? Sometimes we beat ourselves up trying to get a hold of God, and if we would just stand still and listen. You know, as I walked in through the threshold of that door, I stood still for a moment. I started to listen. And I immediately had this spirit of repentance fall on me. Wow. You know, repentance is a gift. The Bible says to pray that God would grant you repentance. That means it's granted, as you say here. I say granted but it's granted to you because God allows that to come in because he sees your heart. And when I walked in through the threshold of that revival in Brownsville in 1996, it changed everything about the way that I thought about God. In fact, I sat there, I remember sitting during the meeting and this evangelist, his name was Steve Hill. He came out and he says, I want everybody to move out of the aisles. He gave these massive altar calls. People came running down to the altar. There was none of this, well, I think I'll come give my life to Jesus. People were like, get out of the way. I've got to get right with God. It was different. The heart and the spirit was different in that place. And he said at this one point, I want everybody to clear the entire sanctuary floor. And th at this point in worship, I was standing there, Pastor Andre, like this. And I had tears flowing down my face. And I was only 19 and I remember saying to God, God, I'm not good. I just want to be good. I know I'm not good. Do you even love me? Do you even care for me? 
That's just where I was at. How many have been there before in your life? Just be real with me. Don't be like, oh, no, I've always been right with God. <laughs> That's the steak I ate the other night. It's bull. <laughs> Not everybody's right with God. But that's where I was, and I lifted my hands, and I said, God, I really need you, and I, I, want, I want to please you. I want my life to please you. I know I'm not pleasing you. I know I'm not living right. Help me, please. And this song was playing. It was like this. It was like, cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. Renew a right spirit within me. You're looking for those who are broken and contrite. Look here with favor. And then the next chorus said, Restore me with joy from heaven. Restore me to sing your praise. Restore me with joy from heaven. And I'll follow your ways. And I'm standing there like this. And I'm lost. I'm not even aware of what the evangelist is saying, what the ushers are doing. It might come off as rebellion, but I ain't moving. I was planted by the water at that moment, and I shall not be moved. And he moved everybody else. And I think Steve Hill looked down at me and saw this was genuine, authentic, never met him in my life, didn't know who he was. I just knew that I was meeting with God and God was cleaning out the inside of my life and revealing to me who he is and how much he loves me. Can I tell you something? The love that God has for his people is unmatched to anything you've ever experienced on this planet. Amen. When you get to heaven, you will have to be on all fours because you won't be able to even contain what he has planned for those whom he loves. Let me try this church over here. I love the reaction. He loves us so unconditionally. And I stood there and everybody else went by. And so in the video of the Browns Revival, here's a kid standing there with a white shirt on that says, More Lord, on the back. And I'm just like this. That night I was placed on the floor. It was hard to peel me off. Went back to New York and people started telling me, oh, that's not a big deal. God can move down up here like he moved down there. I said, yeah, but wait a second. You don't have thousands of people lined up outside the door at 7 a.m. in the morning on a Tuesday to get into the 7 p.m. night meeting. What are you talking about? All of a sudden, the religious started uproaring a little bit and going, well, we don't, we could, we, God can move here. And I just, I had to say very realistically and raw, he's not moving up here like he's moving there. Wow. I almost wanted to shout at these guys and go, why don't you just yield, open your heart and let God move the way he's moving down there. Yes. You spoke on it last night. You said, you know, when you start moving and God, you're doing what God's called you to do, Another way of saying is when you start realizing who you are in Christ, you start realizing your identity is not you, it's him in you. The boldness that comes upon you just shuts down everything else around you. However, the dogs begin to bark at you. And I heard a saying that Pastor Rodney Howard Brown, if you ever heard that name, he's my pastor. He said it's a South African thing. The dogs keep barking, but the caravan keeps moving on. That's why this revival is moving the way it is. Of course, there's going to be attacks that come. And so I went back to New York, and they attacked, man. They just went on the attack, almost to blow my candle out in my heart. And it took a couple of years for me to understand what is going on. I thought this was it. When I came to this revival meeting, this would be it. This is over now. No. What happens is, is God blows a couple things out of your heart so he can replace it with something new, and it has to begin to grow. It's a seed that gets planted. Just like you this morning that are watching on television, what you're hearing right now is just the beginning of a seed being planted inside of you. You know, you look around, everything, everything you see could become a sermon to you. You look outside, there's a tree outside. In fact, it was yesterday where I was drinking this mango smoothie drink. 
it was, you know, the Lord told me to buy it, so I did what he said. I'm obedient. <laughs> and it had a seed inside of it, and the seed was very small. And I said, look at this. I said, inside this seed is a whole entire tree. And in that tree is loads of fruit that have even more of these seeds. It never stops producing. Let me throw something at you here. Do you know that God has never created another thing since he rested? It's still been growing and producing since the beginning of time. He never had to go redo it. He didn't rest because he's tired. He rested because he's satisfied with what he has done. Come on. Now, when, when man fell, God sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ. You know, I want to say this to, to people watching Faith TV. When you get to heaven, you're still not going to get out of giving an offering. The first thing you're going to do is throw the crown right at his feet and go, it's all because of you. Come on, somebody. It's all because of you, not me. He wants to crown you. We're going to have a bit of a fight, Jesus and I, because I'm going to be, he's going to try to give me a crown. I'm going to be like, no, this is yours. None of this would have happened if it wasn't for you. And this is also the problem with the body of Christ. They don't know how to receive. They don't know how to believe who they truly are, which is why we have to turn to the word. Revival meetings come and go. They're never meant to last forever. They're meant to deposit a seed of greatness into you, to burn away all the dross and the chaff, to get you fired up to realize, oh my gosh, I've been wasting my time here on earth. I don't want to show up in heaven empty-handed. I want to bring all the fruit I can possibly produce because he gave his seed, I'm giving mine in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? So I want to take you to the word, and you know, go to 2 Timothy chapter 3.16. And in this will help you. You know the famous scripture, John 3.16. Always remember 2 Timothy 3.16. Always remember Luke 3.16. What was with the 3.16s? Well, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, 2 Timothy chapter 3.16, this is why we need the word. The apostle Paul was telling his son, Timothy, his son in faith, this is from the Amplified Classic, 2 Timothy 3.16, every scripture is God-breathed, given by his inspiration and profitable for instruction, for reproof and conviction of sin, for correction of error and discipline and obedience, and for training in righteousness, in holy living and conformity to God's will and thought, purpose, and action. For what purpose? Look at the next verse in verse 17. So that the man of God may be complete and proficient, well fitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Look at me real quickly. Every storm that comes in your life, if you don't have ammunition, how do you think you're going to overcome that thing? What, are you just going to stand there? Jesus, Jesus. Most people have their prayer life like this. Father, help! That's the majority of people's prayer life. Help! We haven't been called to be those people. Help like that. I mean, there has to be maturity. I mean, once you get saved and born again and you've given your life to Jesus, he comes and steps on the inside of you through his Holy Spirit and begins to train you. He begins to work out your salvation. Just because you gave your life to Jesus, it doesn't mean it's over. It means you have now come to the reality of what has already been done for you. But there's more. I said, there's more. Just when you've been in church for 25, 30 years, you think, well, I think I know every scripture now. You don't know squat. You're still learning. You think you get to heaven and eternity, we're just going to know everything? I think there's still facets of God we're still going to see go, oh, my goodness. Like, for instance, in heaven, the four and twenty elders that bow down before and the four living creatures that sing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. 
I've got a friend of mine. His name is Don Potter. How many have ever heard of Don Potter? He wrote that famous song, Show me your face, Lord, show me your face. He said he studied out the word holy in that scripture where the 420 elders bow before God. And when he studied it out, he says, you know what I found, Roy? Every time they said holy, they were not repeating the same song over and over and over again like it's old. And they just keep rehashing it. He says every time they would bow down and they'd say holy, they would lift back up to praise him and they would see another facet of God that they'd never seen before. And they would go holy. They'd get back up and they would see another facet they'd never seen before. And that continues throughout all eternity. He's the ancient of days. He's the ageless one. He's the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He's Alpha and Omega. Or should I say he's the Alpha and Omega. Somebody goes, he's the Alpha. No, he ain't that Alpha. <laughs> God doesn't have pronoun problems. <laughs> He's neither male or female. He created man in his image and in his likeness, and out of man he created woman, and the whole thing is right here. When man and woman come together that love each other and love God, they produce another one Amen. out of their love. God produced you out of his love. He loved you before you ever loved him. He chose you before you ever chose him. This whole life is to find out not only who he is, but to find out who you are. We were all lost in the fall in the garden from our great, great, great grandparents named Adam and Eve. We lost sight of the Father in the garden. But Jesus was plan A. Did you know that? He wasn't plan B. If, if he was plan B, the universe is really shakable. It's very uneasy to have a plan B. It's like God didn't work like this. Okay, something's gone wrong. Give me a minute. I'll think about this. Hang on. I got an idea. I think we'll send my son Jesus. Hopefully it'll work out. No. Revelation says, that's why it's, you have to read your word. Revelation says that he was crucified at the foundations of the earth. Look at Jeremiah. I think it's 1-5 where he's telling Jeremiah, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Acts chapter 17, verse 26, he talks to the men of Athens, Paul the Apostle. You know what he says? He said, God has predetermined our boundaries and our dwelling places in the hopes that we would reach for him. Yep. That means you alive right now, and if you're able to hear my voice in real time watching this program, God didn't create you to be born in the 1700s or the 1300s or the days of the medieval times. He created you for today. Today is the day of salvation. Today you were placed here by God himself for this season now. And you need the word to discover who you are. Revival is not just shouting hallelujah. I've been in all those revival meetings, even been a part of one that hit the world. I don't spend too much time talking about it, but... The Lakeland Revival drew close to 350,000 people from 240 countries descended upon the city of Lakeland in between Orlando and Tampa, Florida in the United States of America. People flew in for weeks. People got rid of their businesses to come because they felt like this is it. And it was it because everybody was coming. People didn't know what to expect, but they came. And I'm telling you, when they came to that revival... In the middle of rehearsal with my band, and I preached eight of the night, so I also spoke the word, but in the rehearsal time, thousands would come up against the stage, and we didn't have rehearsal. We rehearsed the presence. We already had a live worship service before the live worship service started. By the time seven o'clock rolled in, they said, five, four, three, two, you're on. I said, are you ready to worship? The whole place went, ah. You would feel like you're on the front lines of the battlefield with William Wallace, the Scottish, taking over the English. People were not messing around. They had a passion inside of them. 
Just as Dr. Andre spoke about that last night. How many were here for the word last night? It was really good. You watching. Passion. You can't do anything without passion. This is even, this is even a natural principle. How many have ever heard of Donald Trump? Okay, you're all lying because hardly anybody raised your hands. How many have ever heard of the president of the United States in 2019 named Donald Trump? Okay, do you know, here's a natural guy who owned casinos and yet lived by the principles that God placed on the earth, took his seed and multiplied it. I'll give you a great example. And this isn't here to talk about Trump the whole time, okay? Somebody's like, well, his daddy gave him $1 million. No, he didn't. He lent him $1 million. Donald Trump took the $1 million and invested it and did something with what he was given and turned it into $9 billion with a B. That's equivalent to giving you $100 and you turn it into a million dollars. Come on. It's a natural principle. What are you going to do with what God's given you in your hands? I heard this one said, when you give to God what is in your hands, he releases what's in his hands and gives it to you. It's not a transaction necessarily. It's a relational transaction. God loves it when you believe his word. He loves it when you actually in your heart believe his word over how you feel or what you see. I wouldn't be able to be here if I didn't believe in my heart that God called me. All these years, I was on the Sid Roth show years ago, and if you've ever heard of Sid Roth, he, he, I call him Uncle Sid. I've known him for so long, and he's such a great, like a father kind of figure guy who's been on television, interviewed everybody, including Catherine Kuhlman. And he said to me, he says, I can't believe you're still in ministry. I said, why would you say that? He goes, well, everything you've been through. And I said, well, you know, it's the grace of God. I just believe. You have to be careful when you're following the Lord that your heart doesn't get calloused. Stick back to the word. God will cut all that stuff away. Or as Reinhard Bonnke said, <laughs> Reinhard Bonnke said that this Bible is like a bar of soap. The fact that you stand in a shower and the water's running does not make you clean. But when you apply the soap to your life, you become clean. Or as he would say, the bar of soap is the Bible. When you apply it, you are clean. <laughs> Amen! <laughs> now, why did I mention Donald Trump? And I'm going to get back into the word. I mentioned Donald Trump because even in the natural world, Jesus looked at the people of the world and said, why are the sons of this world wiser than the sons of light? We're supposed to be the sons and daughters of light. And Jesus is commending the world because they actually know the principles and apply them. Doesn't mean they live their life right for God, but even the principles in the natural world work. Imagine if a born-again, spirit-filled, tongue-talking, word-believing body of people began to actually come in line with God's spirit and his word. You would be a powerhouse to be reckoned with. Everywhere you walk, the environment would change around you simply because you're standing there with him on the inside of you. Filled with his word, filled with his spirit, knowing exactly what to do. And some people will come at you and go, I wouldn't do that if I were you. And you go, I'm not me right now. I carry him. He told me to do this. You only get that by staying in the word and just moving by his spirit. Faith pleases God. It pleases God. Go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I, I, I tell you right now, you know, I sang for so many years, probably around 34 years I've been a worship leader, singing, musician, whatever you want to call me. But the last five years, and I was in the Word during that time too, but the last five years I have eaten the Word like it was my last meal. I pray that the desire for your hunger for the Word 
would be imparted into you today. That you wouldn't just say, well, I love the word, but you don't really invest the time to put it into you. You know, when Jesus, you think about this. When Jesus was reading Psalms or Proverbs, Jesus was reading that word for the first time in the flesh on earth by faith, believing that what was spoken through Solomon to his sons, that that was God speaking to Christ. And he believed his word and began to actually apply what he read. And it changed his life. Somebody says, not Jesus, he was divine. He was divine, but he came as a man like you and I. Why did Jesus come like a man like you and I? So he could look you in the face and truthfully, authentically say to you, I understand. I've walked where you're walking. I've felt what you're feeling right now. I understand. You know, one day we're going to see Jesus, and he kept his flesh body, by the way, with the scars. Warning, if you have any dreams of Jesus appearing to you in a dream, and he's just in white, and you can't see the scars, it's probably not him. A lot of people said they see Jesus, but after they see Jesus, they come and tell me that. And I look at them, I go, I don't think you saw Jesus because you look like hell. <laughs> If you've seen Jesus, your countenance is shining, you're weeping, what your story's saying is moving my spirit. I can tell you've been with Jesus because it's convicting me just saying that. Amen. You can tell who's been with Jesus who hasn't been with Jesus. Trust me, you, you can. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. Jenny, this is why I love the Amplified Classic. It really exegetes the word. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. I want to show you a quick clip, very quickly, of a guy named David Attenborough. How many have ever heard of David Attenborough? He's that English voice of uh, National Geographic. Have you ever seen that before? He goes, and now we can see the leopard pounces upon the, he's got that kind of voice, you know. The leopard pounces upon the gazelle. Sadly now, there can be but only one outcome. <laughs> you ever heard that guy before? Do you know that he's a proclaimed agnostic, which means he doesn't know if God exists. He has a friend named Dr. Richard Hawkins who says God definitely doesn't exist. But David Attenborough has a problem because he's looking around in nature and seeing there's something that's trying to speak to me, but I, I don't necessarily understand what it is, so I can't say that there's not a God. The spirit of Antichrist is moving at the highest rate of speed I've ever seen across the world today to convince people that God is not real. What a foolish thing for a person to think that God is not real. Proverbs says a fool has said in his own heart that God is not real. That there is no God. Watch this real quickly, and I want to show you a perspective from heaven of how we should see as we walk around. God gave Jesus for you and I to live inside of us so that we walk as his hands and his feet. What we're doing in this revival is his hands and his feet for the year 2022. Rory and I are from America, but we're in South Africa. When we landed in this country, we became like you. I'm sorry for the English. I'm sorry for the American voice. But I'll tell you what, when we came here, we are just like you. We become like you. So our heart is for South Africa today. I'm not just saying that to pander to the, con the, the congregation. Our heart is for whatever God wants to do here. Well, I know what God wants to do here. He wants to set people free. He wants your mindset to be broken from the world's cares and all their ideas and their thoughts that keeps pulling you away from God. He wants you to realize who you are in Christ. You are a powerful force of wind of God to be reckoned with. That wherever you step, the environment changes around you. Well, watch this real quickly. This is David Attenborough being interviewed. And watch what he says. And I'm going to pay close attention to this. I'm going to bring us right back to the word. Watch this real quickly. Then that's the one I go for. But you don't want to go the full hog because I mean, somebody like your old friend Richard Dawkins used to go tadpoling with him years ago. I think Richard Dawkins would say, 
look, let's you just, I think you described yourself as an agnostic, but he'd want to say, let, why don't you say that you're an atheist? Because if you say that, you clear away all this religious clutter and people can then appreciate the scientific wonder of the world. But your agnosticism, I think, is a... Is this, would you say it's a scientific agnosticism? You feel, as a scientist, you yes, should I never think, say you know? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't help thinking uh, of when I have, for example, taken off the, the top of a termite hill and I've seen termites in there, um, all busying about um, building walls, looking after the queen, caring for the pupae, clearing the nest, all busy about it, then they're all blind, and they have the faintest idea that I am there watching what they're doing, because they don't have those sense organisms which would allow them to know that. And I do sometimes feel that maybe I'm lacking in some sense organ, and I don't know whether there's anybody else involved in all this sort of thing. And it's a, it's a very um, confident thing to say that I'm absolutely sure. Uh, that uh, that there's nothing in this world that I don't have the sense organs to appreciate. That's that would be my position. And Richard, I don't I don't doubt would say, well, that's rather feeble. That's not being very brave. And he maybe has got a case. start to think, you know, well, this is all there is. Well, not really, because I, I just stood and I looked down and I saw this ant hole, and so I zoomed into it. They have no clue that I'm standing there. They have no idea that I am like, how many would agree that I'm like God to them right now? I could, okay, anybody else, how many agree that you're like God to the ant because you could extinguish them in three seconds? Okay, maybe a millisecond. And you look down and you see there's all this life going on and you're observing this, but they have no clue that you're standing there watching them. Why do I bring this video into play? Because God created us in his image and likeness to partake, to have his perspective on the earth. Our ways are not his ways. But when we begin to read his word, our ways become his ways. Our thoughts become his thoughts. We see differently. We see in a different perspective. We see all of a sudden, maybe I can do this. Maybe I, no, it's not maybe I can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. But if you don't believe it, it will not become reality to you until you read the word, believe it, receive it, and then do it. Everybody told Andre and Jenny, you know, you really think you should do this across the globe? You really think you can do all this financially and everything? He's like, no. I don't think I can do anything, but God in me can do everything. Yes. Come on, somebody. But here's my, here's my contention. A lot of people push God way out here like he's not close to us. Folks, he's 18 inches below your nose. He chose to live on the inside of us. Right. No, you are not Jesus. No, you are not God. Everybody look at your name and go, thank goodness. <laughs> but you carry him on the inside of you. And by the way, when you got born again, you didn't get a junior Holy Spirit that you have to feed every day. You got the same spirit that lived in Christ. Right. You know, I, I know it's a semantic of words, it's semantics, but you know what? You actually don't ever have to feed your spirit. Your spirit has everything it ever needed from the beginning of time. When God gave you his spirit, that's where you draw everything from. It's your soul that needs to link up with your spirit and become in tandem with them. And guess what happens? You say, oh, the flesh is pulling me. The flesh is pulling me. This is what Christ did. Jesus, when he came on the earth, he carried the spirit of God with him. The Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. It was a sign, a symbol to say that the Holy Spirit's with him. The next scripture says that the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. When he went into the wilderness, he went through all kinds of torment and harassment from the enemy, challenging his identity of, oh, you really think you're the son of God, do you? 
You really think that you're going to do all this stuff. Man's going to let you down. Hey, you look a little hungry. You should turn this stone into bread. I love what Jesus says. He doesn't say, hey, back off a couple feet, all right? <laughs> you know what he says? He says, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, which means we can eat bread. <laughs> Come on. Amen. Come on. That's what he said. Thank you, Lord, I received that. <laughs> Thank you for your Holy Ghost scones right now. Mm. We went to this one, we were doing a pit stop, and I walked into this gas station, and they had like a bakery, and I, I mean, the smell. Do you guys remember the scone smell? Oh, my gosh, I was just like, I felt like I was being hovered into the... Somehow I'm here and I'm supposed to buy scones from you. I don't know. I was led by the Spirit. <laughs> but Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. The enemy tested Jesus to find out what he was made of. He does the same thing to you. Listen, the torment's never going to stop as long as you live on this earth. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be tormented. It means the torment coming towards you, the harassment of the enemy, the doubt, the unbelief, all the impossibilities, all the way of lining up with the world's way of thinking is always going to come against you. But that's why you have to be a person of the Spirit that stays with his word and goes, you know what, I'm feeling that this is not comfortable right now, but I know I'm coming through this in Jesus' name. I don't know how I'm coming through it, but I'm coming through it in Jesus' name. And when you have the word, it just solidifies it. It anchors you. And the winds come. You know, we just had that hurricane. Hurricane Ian came through Florida. I live in Orlando. It didn't touch us. It's because we're favored. Nobody really responded to that. <laughs> Pastor Andre and Pastor Rodney were duking it out between Na uh, Naples and Tampa. They were praying, so the, the storm kept going back and forth. <laughs> and it landed in this one place. <laughs> You're to blame. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, you know, I remember a song. Again, the word being placed in your life as a child. I remember this song. Don't build your house on a sandy land. Don't build it too near the shore. It may look kind of nice, but you'll have to build it twice. Then you'll have to build your house once more. <laughs> you got to build your house upon the rock. You got to build your house upon the word of God. The rains may come and go, but the word of God I will know. Your foundation is on his word. It's not in your opinions. It's not what you think you know or what you think you can come up with. It's on his word. Greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. Who's in the world? A defeated devil. And he was defeated at the cross. God removed every excuse of every believer that says, I can't do it. You can do it. Well, the enemy, the devil's after me. Well, first of all, he's not omnipotent. He's not omniscient. That's right. He can't be everywhere at the same time. In fact, if you could really see with eyes of the Spirit of what's been bothering you, it's some little tiny itty-bitty stick demon who's blind in both eyes, deaf in both ears, sits in a wheelchair and goes by the name of Lucky. <laughs> and this is the thing that tries to torment you. Very few people realize the power that God has given us to overcome every single situation, to overcome in your finances, to overcome in sickness in your body, to overcome what you've been called to do. If you live by man, if you live by their praises, you're going to have to live by their criticisms. But when God says, listen, I'll take it all. Give me the glory. Give me the honor. Give me the accolades. Give me the praises. Give me the glory. I'll take care of all this stuff for you. Don't worry. Just stay with me. I'll take care of it. How many know he's a good father? He's a good dad. All right. I want you to go to John chapter 14, verse 23. And I got 17 minutes or so here. Jesus answered, if a person really loves me, he will keep my word 
Obey my teaching, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home, abode, special dwelling place with him. You know, have you ever thought of this? When you die, if you've given your life to Christ, you are going to be in heaven for all eternity with the Father who originally created you. Yes. You're going to return back to where you came from. You know, on this earth right now, to the unbeliever, this is the most heaven they're ever going to experience in their life is being on earth. But to the believer, this is the most hell you'll ever experience after this time. When you give your life to Jesus, they come and they make their home inside of you. Jesus said out of his own mouth, he says, my father and I will come and make our home inside of you. Have you ever thought about this when Jesus said to the disciples, he said, my father has many mansions. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If there were not, I would have told you so. Did you know the word mansion is not building? It means dwelling place. Wow. You really think we're going to heaven to sit in a gigantic 9,000 square foot mansion and you're all alone because there's no marriage given in heaven because we come like the angels. You really think that's what it is? Or is there something deeper, something richer? You know, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord look to and fro across the earth, looking who will be loyal to him. In other words, who really loves me? Because I know I can see everything. Kind of like I saw the ants. You know, the reality of what you saw on that screen has become real reality to me. I am aware that my Father in heaven is watching me. But did you know that he sees you the same way he sees Jesus? How do you know that, Roy? 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. As he is, so are we. People quote it, but they don't get the revelation of it. As he is, so are we. You ready for this? When Jesus died on the cross, Jesus died as you. When he descended into hell, he descended into hell as you. When he ascended out of hell from the earth back to the top of the earth, he ascended as you. He was resurrected as you. Acts chapter 1, he was caught up in the air as you. Yes, it's him, but he's coming back the same like manner that he left. And see, us and our flesh, we don't understand. See, the flesh and the spirit are constantly at war with each other because they don't understand each other. And we are in the middle, body, soul, spirit. We are in the middle of this massive war because of the fall. Jesus has already paid the price, he's already died. He's already descended into hell. He's already come out of hell. He's already resurrected, and he's already sitting at the right hand of the Father back where he was from the beginning. The revelation is, as he is, so are we in this world. What does the Bible say? We are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Amen. Right now. Amen. Well, how is that possible? Because I'm here, and if I'm there, that's kind of weird. <laughs> you ever seen the movie Avatar? Let me just throw a little fantasy thought at you here, okay? And I'm going in biblical on this. What if you are seated in heavenly places, which the Bible says you are, but you're down here for a very short time? For what purpose? It's very easy. John chapter 17, verse 3. Jesus is praying and he said, this is eternal life. Wait a minute, I thought eternal life is when I die and go to heaven. No, 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 no. Eternal life starts the moment you believe. That's right. That's right. This is eternal life. How many would agree with me that Jesus just defined what eternal life is in his prayer and it's written down 2,000 years. We read it, we now get the revelation of it. This is eternal life, that they would know the one true God why is the word true? Why is the word one true in there? Why couldn't he just pray as we pray? Lord, we just pray this is eternal life, that they would come to know you and me. That's not what the word says. That's why the word's important. The word says this is eternal life, that they would come to know you, the one true God. Why? 
Because Jesus said, the God of this world is coming for me. Who's that? Little G. It was Satan at that time. And sentence has already been proclaimed on him. So Jesus is saying in his prayer, without even preaching this, he's just praying that they would come to know the one true God. You know, a lot of people in this room right now, you've created a different God in your imagination because you didn't stay in the word. The word will chip away all those falsities and all those heresies and all those demonic doctrines to keep you solid knowing who you are in Christ. That's what happens with many, many different denominations. They start veering away from the word a little bit, and they start creating this new revelation over here that you can't really justify it in the word over here. And this is where I want to bring you to these last 10 minutes. It's one thing to believe in the historical Jesus. I don't believe in the historical Jesus. I believe in the Jesus that's alive and well today who died and rose again and he is physically, literally, and spiritually watching you and I right now in the banisters of heaven. According to Hebrews chapter 12, we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. So let us throw off every entanglement of sin that so easily entangles us. I actually believe we are being observed the same way you just watched me observe those ants. I actually believe it. And you know what it does for me? It gets me excited and it also keeps me in check. Why do you stop at a red light today in 2022? Cameras. Traffic rules. Camera. The all-seeing eye. <laughs> you ran to the red light. You're like, dang it, I'm getting a ticket. Jesus. But what if that wasn't there? What did you do in the past? <laughs> you cannot have the awareness of God unless he reveals himself to you. See, the, the other part of being a Christian, the other part of being a disciple is when you allow him to come in and discipline you and correct you. A lot of people, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, I just love Jesus, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. And then bring them one word of correction, we'll see how much they love you. The reality of who God is can be found in you. Okay, I'm not Jesus. I'm not God. But he's hiding behind these cow eyes of mine as if he's taken me over and possessed me through his word so that I will tear down the works of the enemy, which is why we're here in the first place. Come on. Come on. You're not here to exist. Jesus didn't die on the cross so you could just exist. He said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly now. Not something you're looking forward to. You got an agnostic that's looking at termites in a hill saying, you know, I feel like maybe I'm blind. Maybe I don't have the sense organs. You are, sir. Mm -hmm. But whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You start to realize who you are in Christ. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. When you start to walk that way, you walk differently. You walk with passion, but you also walk with authority. You have the answer for somebody that comes to you. You don't stumble because you have the word. You're ready in season, out of season. Whatever comes your way, you're ready. So I'm, I'm so tired. I'm tired. I've been doing this a long time. I've been doing the ministry for over 20-something years. I'm, I'm pretty tired. But when the Spirit comes in, He quickens me. All of a sudden, I'm like, hey, I got some energy and I didn't drink coffee. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the Spirit within you that gives you life. I said it's the spirit within you that gives you life and life more abundantly now. We're not waiting for the, the last days. We're in the last days. 
We're not waiting for it to come to us. We are already have it now. How do, you, how do you obtain that? You get in the Word, you start reading about what He is, and you start reading about who you are. Like I could tell you right now, there's not one person in the sound of my voice that has ever seen their face ever. You say, oh yeah, I did, I looked in the mirror. Uh-uh. You only interpreted what the reflection of the mirror told you you look like while you're on this earth. You have never personally seen your own face. So you judge according to the natural. I'm not saying you shouldn't sp hairspray your hair. Some women hairspray their hair so bad there's flies still stuck in the air right now. <laughs> but if all you do is live by the natural, you are missing the very deep spiritual things because you're going to shed this body one day and it's going to be all spirit and nothing else for all eternity. We see through a glass darkly and dimly, but one day we'll be face to face. So why did I bring that point up that you've never seen your face? Because you're looking in the wrong mirror. You should look in the mirror if you live on earth. Please, ma'am, do your hair. Please, sir, brush it. But the real mirror is his word. When you look into this mirror, you go, I don't need any makeup. Hallelujah. And I'm talking about the men. <laughs> it's 2022. The world's getting darker and darker. But you can never see God's fireworks clearly unless there's the backdrop is the darkness. <laughs> You see him just light up the place. When you walk in the place, you're like his firework. Baby, you're a firework. She thinks she wrote that song for herself. I just took it from her. You're God's firework. There's an explosion on the inside of you that wants to take place everywhere you go. It's one thing to talk about Jesus died on the cross, rose from the dead. It's another thing to say, as he is, so am I. That's right. That God sees me the exact same way he sees Jesus. Is it Galatians 4, 6? The apostle Paul says that God has given us the spirit of his son into our hearts to cry out, Abba, Father. Let me take it a little deeper. Go to Galatians chapter 4, verse 6. While you keep your thumb there for a second, let me go to verse 19 of chapter 4 in Galatians. My little children, from whom I am again suffering birth pangs, until Christ is completely and permanently formed within you. Is anybody getting a hold of that this morning? Until Christ is permanently formed in you. When you get born again, it's not just I'm saved from hell. It's not just I'm saved from my sin. I have been made into a brand new species that has never been on the earth before. I think completely different than the average human being walking down the street. Oh, you think you're all that. They said that to Jesus too. They said to him, why do you make yourself out to be like equal with God? You know, he didn't say, well, I don't. He didn't say, well, I do. He just started quoting the word back at them. He goes, doesn't your law say that ye are little gods? They misused their power. God came to restore it back to his sons and daughters. Amen. So look at verse real quickly because we're running out of time. We've got two minutes here. And because you really are his sons, this is Galatians 4, 6, God has sent the Holy Spirit. The Amplified says the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say it over and over. God has sent the Holy Spirit of his Son into our hearts. What's the last thing Jesus said on the cross when he died? It wasn't, it is finished. Read the Bible. The very last thing he said is, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. What did God the Father do with the spirit of Jesus who walked perfectly on the earth for some scholars believe 33 and a half years, no sin, pure Holy Spirit? What did God do with the spirit that Jesus committed into his hands to say, do whatever you want with it? Acts chapter 2. 
In the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Now watch this. Gavin, just put it on there real quickly. The name Jesus in Hebrew is Yeshua. How many know the name Jesus is Yeshua in Hebrew? Hebrew has letters. What's the revelation you're trying to bring me? You guys, we can live the same life Jesus did on the earth here and overcome. We can live the same life right now as Paul and Peter and James and John and Bartholomew and Andrew and Philip. The same exact way they lived, believing God with the Holy Ghost inside of them. You can live the same life now. Now, on the screen, look at this. The word Yeshua has Hebrew letters. It's coming up now by faith. <laughs> and I guess we don't have it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Ayin, ya, uh, ayin, vav, shin, and yud. Look at these letters. Muhammad can't do this. Krishna can't do this. Buddha can't do this. We got one minute left. Look at those letters in Hebrew. They look like something. What's the next slide? Look at your hand real quickly. Those of you who are watching, we got 45 seconds. We're going off right now. Look at your hand. A fool has said in his heart, there is no God. What does an artist do to his masterpiece after he's painted it? He signs his name. God has signed the name of his son, Yeshua, on every hand of every human being that's ever been born. You should look at your hand right now, and we're going off the air. I'm going to toss it back over to Jade and Shantae right now. You have the power because he lives on the inside of you. Everybody say, I got the power. I got the power. Glorious time in the presence of God. Weren't you blessed by that broadcast right now in the comment section and on Facebook? Go ahead and just dec decree and declare it right now. I am blessed in Jesus' name. In fact, if you've just jumped on or you've just, you watched for the very first time, it, it was not by coincidence. Nev God never works by coincidence. He's very intentional. And today his hand, his mighty right hand, is stretching out to you saying, my child, I've been calling, I've been calling you and I've been knocking at the door of your heart. But the question is this, will you open up? You know, we saw, we we serve such a loving father, a father that knows us by name. In fact, he knows the number of hairs on our heads. Yeah, come on. What an incredible father that we get to serve. This father who yeah. gave his only son come to on. die on the cross for, for our sins so that yes. we could be made whole, so that we could be free, yeah. so that we could live in his abundance, his fullness. Jesus gave his life in exchange for us. All of our sin, all of our depression, our anxiety, every stronghold, every bondage that yeah. you might be feeling is... All on top of you right now, Jesus paid the price to take it all away. And today he's giving you that opportunity yeah. to say, Lord, I give everything that is troubling me, I give it to you. Yeah. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You you heard Pastor Roy preach now. You heard Pastor Jenny preach and you felt, God, I want to connect with this. I, d I don't want to live a substandard life. I don't want to live a mediocre life. I want to give you all of who I am because I want your fullness. I want your abundance. Right. And if that's you, we want to pray with you today. Come on, let's pray. So wherever you are right now, you want to pray this prayer, you want to make a decision to follow Jesus, let's pray together. Say this after us. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, today I confess that I've sinned against you and I repent. I believe that you died for me and on the third day you rose again in all power, in all authority and you're coming back again for me. Today I receive the free gift of salvation. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. From today onwards, I will never be the same again. Heaven is my home. And today, all things are made new. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, welcome to the family, child of God. The beginning of your best days in Jesus' mighty name. We can boldly declare now, and this is why you boldly hear us say it every single time as a faith family all around the world. And from Potchefstroom right here in the northwest province of South Africa, we can boldly declare today the best is yet to come in Jesus' name. Come on, and everything that you heard yeah. preached today is yours Hallelujah. in Christ in the name of Jesus because you are a child of God. Yeah. Poverty is not your portion.
portion. Sickness is not your portion. Disease is not your portion. The fullness of God is your portion. And you now get to boldly approach the throne of grace. You can open your Bible. You can find a promise in the Word of God. And you can allow the Holy Spirit to to elevate you, to, to, to open the Word of God to you and receive every promise that He has for you. Well, family, welcome to the family of God. <laughs> Email us what now at myfaithtv.com. Tell us what the Lord has done and testify of His goodness and faithfulness. We've got a small gift that we want to bless you with, something that you can, you, you know, you can mark this day on and say, today all things have become new in my life. Now, talking about all things, we are traveling. Come on, we are Tonight, we are in Kimberley at TD Church. You need to be a part of what God is doing. Come on, once again, we are there, TD Church, tonight, 6 p.m. at TD Church. Come through, come be a part of what God is doing. Then we're making our way all the way to Bloemfontein, all right? Bloemfontein, Bloemfontein. You need to say it correctly, Bloemfontein. We are at Divine Restoration Ministries, and we are so excited, so expectant. So if you are anywhere, Bloemfontein, Kimberley, those surrounding areas, be sure to come and join us. That will be our seventh, correct? Seventh uh, province of South Africa. Then we make our way, all roads lead down to Cape Town, the mother city. Cape Town, we give you big love and big hugs. I know the Table Mountain is awaiting us all, <laughs> awaiting the revival. And then we make our way all roads lead to the Great Faith Dome in Buffalo City for Faith Revival 5.0. Now, family, if you've not been able to join us for the revival tour in any of the meetings, we want to personally invite you, personally Come on, personally invite you, personally encourage you to make your way through because I tell you, it's going to be good. Shanta, any last words to our family? We better see you. Come we on. better be able to give you a hug, to give you some love. Come and enjoy the Fellowship of Revival Tour 2022 with us. Come on, be refreshed, be revived. We love you, family. Now signing off right here from Port of Strom. We'll catch you tonight at TD Church for Revival. See you soon.